and police in Indianapolis say a teenage girl died. Nine other people were hurt during a Halloween party. Chicago community activist Andrew Holmes tells us his 16-year-old grandson was one of the victims. A teen was shot in the leg, shattering his bone, hitting his vein. Indianapolis police say officers got to the large party, heard gunfire, then saw people running away. Uh, no one arrested in that case either. Again, one of those victims, uh, the grandson of renowned Chicago community activist Andrew Holmes. Uh, Mr. Holmes, you are joining us now live in the studio. Uh, we appreciate you being here this morning. We want to send you our condolences first off. Yes, good morning. How are you? Good. Uh, our condolences to you, Mr. Holmes. Uh, as a friend, a uh, father, grandfather, uh, your grandson is a teenager, a football player at Lawrence North, I believe. And it's a big school in Indy. Uh, he was one of 10 wounded uh, teenagers um, at that party. Uh, what went down? And, and how, how, it's so trite and cliche, you know, but how is he, how is he doing? How are you doing? Well, I'm, I'm coming along okay, but he's in a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. uh, he's still in the hospital. Um, there was, his father uh, decided to let him go um, to this uh, Halloween party. Uh, one of the football players was, had invited him. But at the same time, his father had the decision not to let him go. You know, they, they're close-knit. But with so much going on across the United States uh, with shootings, the decision that he made, and I let him know it wasn't a bad choice. You know, it's not his fault because he wanted to keep him at home. So you have to let these teenagers sometimes, you know, venture out, enjoy life. But the individual discharged his weapon, striking 10 people, and one female is deceased. But my grandson was shot in the leg, shattered his bone, and it ruptured his vein. And he's, of course, an athlete, too. And you're right, you can't keep kids on lockdown. Um, and, and, and this is a dual tragedy for you. Uh, your grandson, uh, his mother, your daughter, uh, was murdered in a shooting in Indianapolis several years ago. That's still unsolved. Uh, how do you how do you round, uh, wrap your head around this, my friend? Well, you you can't. It's a lot of, a lot of pain there because I just about got that call about him at just about the same time I got the call about my daughter and they transferred him to the uh, same hospital. You know, so uh, yeah, I mean it it tough it's tough it hurts but. Whew. You know, we could have we could have lost him too. He's still not out of the woodworks yet. He's still in the red because a lot of swelling and um, you know we don't know if they're going to repair this vein or if he has to have surgery again on this leg. But we're trying to hope that he can heal up. Yeah, some serious trauma uh, to his leg. Um, it's a gun problem. It's a cultural problem. No one knows more than you. It hits on so many societal flashpoints. Uh, what do you do today? What, what keeps you going in spite of this? Well, you know, um, at one point when this happened to my, my daughter, I wanted to stop, you know, doing what I was doing, stop helping. But at the same time, I got to tap to keep going. But I got to stay prayerful for him and stay prayerful for other families because, you know, once that projectile is discharged from that weapon, you know, it tears through the body. It sends a lot of pain, and no family should have to go sit up and identify their loved ones once they leave home. A loved one and a family close that door, and the next door they close would be a casket door mm -hmm. due to negligence of someone discharging that weapon because that projectile tears through that body, whether it hit an artery, a bone, whether you survive or you have permanent damage. Yeah, and sometimes that projectile then permeates not just the individual, but subjectively generations of a family can be affected by one bullet. Uh, we hear over and over and over, you know, shooting, mass shooting, no one's in custody. 
no one's in custody. Uh, there's two rarely prosecutions we know for, for violent crimes. Uh, that's something, you, you know, you're out in the community day and night looking to find perpetrators of these crimes. There, there's even an argument now as to what punishment looks like. Uh, do perpetrators of these crimes need to be caught, prosecuted, and jailed for a long time? Is that the message that you send? Well, we got the toughest laws on the books. They just need to be enforced. Right now, they're not being enforced. And, you know, I say that with uh, pain in my heart that, um, you know, we need, to, we need to step up. You know, Chicago Police Departments and Police Department across the nation uh, crossing the T's and dotting the I's and putting it paperwork into certain state's attorney's office and they're rejecting these cases is not enough evidence. If you got witness and videos, you know, and they're coming forward, you know, let them be judged by jury of their peers. And then we got we to get away from, you know, letting them back out. You know, if the system is getting full and overloaded, then guess what? If we got money, just build another one. That's as simple as that. We have to prosecute. We got to roll up our sleeves and let them criminals know we mean business. You are hurting families. You just can't keep letting violent criminals out. And they're repeated offenders doing the same thing again. I'm not blaming their parents, but what did you learn? Mm -hmm. And what are you learning? as you live in, that you showing more love to that gun than you showing more love to your own life and living. And most times when the shooting happened, the guns disappear. People in the house, you know where that gun went to. You know who ran out of there with that gun. You know, that gun is laying in, in somebody's bed on somebody's warm waist, being warm, while a person is in the medical examiner's office laying on a cold steel. Andrew Holmes, a renowned community advocate, crime fighter here in Chicago, uh, on uh, the day after his uh, grandson uh, wounded in a mass shooting in Indianapolis, Indiana, uh, a young teenage football player wounded, serious condition at the hospital. Uh, our thoughts are with you. Mr. Holmes, thank you for coming in and joining us. Thank you, sir.